I always love Fail Better Games' name because, you know, they're designed to make you die and try again and get better. Um, let's start with me down here. But yeah, so Mask of the Rose is a game that takes place in the Fallen London universe, and there's also Fallen London, which you can see down here is text-based. There's uh, Sunless Seas, and there's Sunless Skies. I don't know if I'm missing anything else. Um, but they're all in this like alternate universe reality where uh, London was stolen by bats. And... No, it doesn't. London was stolen by bats and taken underground to this, like, near hell where a vast sunless ocean is. And in the Fallen London text-based game, you, uh, spend time, you know, text in, like, a text-based adventure, doing quests. You always set out in jail. There's lots of, uh, customization for pronouns and gender and all that. And then Sunless Sea you're, is more of like a roguelike game where you go sailing and you try and survive as long as possible. Um, and I never got to play Sunless Skies. I'm assuming it's kind of the same, but you're in the skies of Sunless Sea. Um, the controller is working. What do we got for settings? Font. Mate. Pros Libra. Mate. I like mate. Regular. Autoplay. Text reveal speed. Why don't we leave that as normal for now? Yeah, let's jump right in. I don't know if there's voice acting or anything. In February 1862, with no warning at all, London fell through the surface of the earth. I mean, I love the music already. This is meant to be a year of progress and industry. The Great Exposition trams a new sewer system. Bothering me that my camera is slightly broken. Instead, we find ourselves dwelling in a cave. It's October now. The fires have been put out. The bodies have been buried. But the future remains unimaginable. The time before and possibly distant. Who were you? So yeah, one of the reasons I really like these games is you can get real weird with your character. Um, so you were an arcane academic, I studied esoteric writings, the hierarchies of spirits, the language of angels, the practical powers of creation. I have friends in high places and I'm familiar with the church's ways, whether I agree with it or not. This is me in real life, actually. You could be a dock worker's child. My father worked the docks unloading ships. My uncle was a sailor. We were on the right side of the law. But the same couldn't always be said for our friends. The docks are allied with the working class and with criminals. Alright, I also like this. Uh, down with the government and capitalism. Okay, so there's only two. I'm definitely going to be the academic at this point. Down here, your name is whatever you say it is. Often, there's one left. no one left to remember who you used to be. My closed captioning decided to stop working. There we go. Some people hold tight to the names they carried before. Some reinvent themselves completely. Sir, my lord, my lady, citizen, comrade, captain, lieutenant, doctor, professor, officer, secretary. Like I said, there's a lot of customization for names and stuff. Brother, sister, reverend, intendant, monjo, madame, mademoiselle, miss. Damn, sir. I'm going with comrade. Um. Oh, no, I wanted to change my name. Oh, no. I thought if I clicked X, it would click on a thing. That's me. Stuart to my friends, comrade to my stranger to strangers. I'm Stuart right now. That's how I was addressed even before London fell. I'm a different person down here than I was above. Down here, I'm finally able to use the name that always fits me. Oh, okay, so these are choices. Um, I'm a different person down here than I was above. I'm no longer Ian, I'm Captain Stewart. 
And then, yeah, you never really see your character. You just kind of pick a silhouette. Um, I'm going... I mean, I do have a ponytail right now. I'm gonna go with this one, though. In the neath, a true ally means everything. When I find people to be close to, I am looking for. Friendship, attraction rather than romance. Romance rather than attraction. Both romance and attraction. You gotta go both romance and attraction. You gotta have the spark. Oh, I can still change my name. Oh, yeah. No, oh, okay, never mind. It just... I, I clicked the wrong button, apparently. Right now, I'm meant to be helping with the census, finding out who still lives in my neighborhood. I guess that will probably change as, uh... If they get controller optimization. Let me see what happens if I click. That's resume. Auto advance. Okay. The first census results are due tomorrow. If I turn them in, I get paid. The first money to come my way in nearly two months. If I don't, I'm going to disappoint Grizz badly. She knew I was in trouble. She went out of her way to find me work with her own employers. She even gave me a badge to show my affiliation. Badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. The front of the badge looks almost like a constable's badge, with a lion and unicorns blazoned on it. The back of the badge has some kind of symbol I don't recognize. Hot to the touch. I keep it with the clothes I have from before the fall, and the few odd items I found more recently. Guess we're gonna change our outfit. I'm gonna use the mouse to do this so I don't accidentally click return. Hat. Alright, yeah. Top hat, mushroom hat, grand, exotically trimmed, and very much a creation of the Neef. Wearing this hat when courting always inspires me with the additional flirtatious things to say. Um, similar. Alright. Okay, put that on. Face. I'm bare face. No, right now. Lapel. Yeah, I would show off where I work. You know, uh, when the, uh, when dating, it's good to show that you have employment. Coatless or an academic gown? I earned it the hard way. This is me. Studious academic, I wear my graduation gown everywhere. The gown and badge say I'm offering my consulting expertise to the ministry. The hat says I don't spend all my hours in the library. Oh, this is already pretty sick. Hello. Grizz, okay, that's our friend. I thought you were up here. She glances at the badge I'm wearing. I suppose I should be glad you're thinking about the census, even if you didn't get around to leaving the house. I react to that the way I react to many things these days. I turn it into a joke. I dare to name the frightening things out there I lie. Yeah, it was a joke. She hasn't accused us of anything too much yet. I thought I'd wait for a change in the weather. A lovely snow, perhaps? I do miss snow. There's no sunshine down here. There's no yellow pea soup fogs. There's no rain, except occasionally a fine mist. Londoners lost half our topics of conversation when we fell. Come tomorrow evening, we need to have at least a few census forms filled out. Or, I'm going to be the one explaining to Mr. Pages. And if that happens, I'm not going to help with your employment prospects again. Grizz works for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. It seems to agree with her. She wears trousers to work and comes home at all hours. It's very important to her being taken seriously by these employers. The next thing I do is characteristic too. Compliment. Reassert. Be open and build trust. Rely on dark humor. Let's build trust. This is our only ally so far. And they got us a job. My apologies. To be frank, I didn't like the look of the city today. Too many dark alleys. I will certainly see we have something to turn in. You still have some time tomorrow. Does this glow mean something? Like, or is that just showing that she's talking? Like, is, does it change colors depending on if she likes me or doesn't like me? She gives me a hard look, as though she could stuff some integrity into a person just by glaring hard enough. 
What do you think of the questions? I have not read the questions yet. I've only glanced at the sheet of paper. They're written in the most peculiar, spiked handwriting, and there are punctures in the paper in random spots. Tease her as though I think that's her handwriting. Jokingly defend my reading ability. Admit I haven't read them. Admit. I was going to review them in the morning. By the refreshing dawn light. There's no dawn here. The light tomorrow morning will be exactly the same as it is now. The only difference is the angle of the hands on the clock. Here, try the questions on me. Say you've knocked on the door and I come to answer it. Yes? What do you want? Introduce myself as the agent of the ministry showing my badge. Read the first question. So I think this seems like the logical step, but if you did this, they might get scared and uh, close the door because you're like an agent of a building that came to question them. But starting off with the question first also implies rudeness. I'm going to introduce myself. I trust you're well this evening. On behalf of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting, I have a few questions. Oh, how lovely. I'm so grateful these ministries are looking after us. Straightforwardly accept, sarcastically accept, flirtatiously riff on how excellent the ministry is. I'm going to flirtatiously riff. The ministry is extraordinary, now you mention it. All its servants are uncommonly clever and attractive. You have not met some of my colleagues. Jokingly speculate. You said the masters wear robes and hoods that you haven't seen their faces. Perhaps they are too radiantly beautiful for anyone to look at. I've wondered. They're magnetic in a way. How many people live in this establishment? Establishment is not a well-formed word. It has two suffixes, both Latin. -ed. Thank you, Professor. If you like, you can translate into questions that are more likely to be understood. Right. How many people live in this establishment? Four. The landlady? Miss Horatia Chapman, a young man named Archibald Reed, myself, and the fourth character, very disreputable. Um, build trust. I'm not a secretive person, Grizz. If I seem disreputable, you only have to ask about it. Yes, maybe, but then you might expect me to answer any of your questions. Read the next question. Is anyone in this establishment enamorificated or impassionated? What does this even mean? They're asking if anyone here is in love. Just ask that. Is anyone here in love? No. He's here. Ask whether she's sure about herself. Ask whether she's sure about me. You sure about yourself? You are certain you're not concealing a deep dedication to someone? My betrothal was not of my choosing, and its end was a blessed relief. I am not carrying any feelings for that time. Has there been anyone else since? And there's no one else? No. At this moment, of course, Archie has to turn up. Damn it, Archie. He's a medical student. He hadn't finished his training before the fall, but he has plenty of work now. Aye, I wondered where you were. What do you need, dude? What are you looking for? There's something that needs explaining. Out I went this morning to visit a patient, and what do I find pasted up on the wall? He holds up a broad sheet. There's a new decree from the Ministry of Cartography and Curiography that all maps and atlases are to be surrendered and put on the fire. It's your folk making these rules, Grizz. Uh, promise that we can be trusted. Suggest Archie leave the topic alone. Stay out. Mm. Let's stay out of it for now. They're just talking. Will you be asking your Mr. Pages about these maps? Mr. Pages expects some loyalty from his people. 
None of us know what's safe down here in the Neath. Most likely there are reasons you can't imagine. Stuart, please do collect at least a few census forms by tomorrow. For a second, I forgot that was my name. <laughs> at the end of the day, I'll find you and we can take them to Mr. Pages together. Gives me a long look before she goes. Aye. Well, next time I'll not come in without knocking. Might be I'll cough a few times so the two of you can separate. Um. Laugh at his teasing but offer no explorations. You gotta be coy. I laugh without answering. Do you think she'd let me meddle with her precious ministry or Horatia? Wouldn't she nay let me so much as send a petition to ask if they could get a message to my family? Said it might be an important impertinence and a danger to her position. But she'll let you talk to them. Oh, I. She might have the looks of being fierce. But if she was to choose someone and then her heart was to be broken? Might be a disappointment or it might be with a thing she couldn't plan. But she'd be sadder than a hanged cat. Turn the subject to the census, to his census. Grizz has me gathering census pages for the ministry. Aye, Grizz told me it was some such thing. I meant to fill pages with answers to questions about you. What questions would those be then? Subject, Archibald Reed, matters of the heart or employment. Um... Start with employment. Um, put the query making it clear that this is for the census. What should I put on the census as your overall employment? Doesn't matter what I do between patients, you can leave that one. Promise to repay frankness somehow in the future. I'll let the question stand. I don't want to give him any favors because he already was like, if we break her heart. I'm like, dude, why are we breaking her heart? Trust the funny thing, I cannot say it's there. Are we done with this foolishness? How you feel it? Is the cave oppressing you too much? Worse than Grizz, I won't lie. Seems there's no road out of here. Food from the masters is a wee reprieve, but when you think of all else that might kill us below, scurvy and the like, a great hulk of the rock fell on the house in Southwark, did the roof did the roof in and near killed the whole household. I'd best be quiet, like to give you nightmares too, and have fair out a lot of them to help you with the sleep. Alright, let me ask you another question. Matters of the heart. Um, use the exact wording. Are you enamorificated or impassionated? Down here? Nay. What about before our adv advent into the Neath? There was a lass back home, and what did my mother do but promise me to her? Go on, tell me more. Sounds like a tale, what happened? Eh, not so uncommon, I think. My mother was friends with this lass's parents, they were getting on in years, and her not married, and of course the whole village knew her business. So me mother said she'd fix it up between us next time. I were home, but I've not been back since. Seemed to me I ought to wait till I finished up with my studies. Might have a better look to it. That's everything I need. Sleep well. Alright, bedtime. Are these days... Days since the fall, season of confessions. The newspapers aren't what they used to be, but someone is still printing broadsheets these days. This morning's lies open on the table. Masters announced revised mushroom rations for hungry Londoners. Okay. Recall the past. What can I do? I have any other clothes to wear? No. Okay. Recall the past.
I'm always reliving London's last night on the surface. I tried to put it out of my head, but it's still there. The dimming of the sun at three in the afternoon, the sky turning the color of rust. The horrible baying and the cloud of dust from the direction of Westminster, the tolling of the bells. The horsemen who rolled down the street, liveried in the garb of the palace, shouting. In Her Majesty's name, go indoors. And then the sky was full of bats, more bats than Egypt had locusts. Wheeling, shrieking, defecating. People went indoors, then if they'd ignore the cries, those that had no house crowded into the churches and under the bridges. Even now, I don't understand. Why Parliament collapsed, how Her Majesty knew to send criers. The bats could behave in so strange a way. How did the Queen know? The palace has been shuttered since that day. The royal family do not emerge. Surely if they had known this was coming, they would have departed London. It was only the city that fell. The rest of England, we assume, remains above. Okay. Weird. I reckon it's a tornado. I heard of something similar in the Welsh hills in 1760. Nay, light in the sky and a noise like a thunderclap. That's no tornado, love. It's a plague of Egypt. Um, I let them talk. I interviewed before they interviewed before they annoyed each other. I sent a pleading look at Gaz. Yeah, I guess talk for now. I've seen tornadoes. They come, and then they move right on again, and they aren't made of bats. They say the tornado scattered livestock every which way. Sleep cheap on rooftops and all that. Then the ground shook again and the pipes rattled. I believe we can blame Mr. Basil Getz excavations digging about under London causing a seismic disturbance. And what did he find down there but a cave of three million bats, is that what you reckon? There are stranger things beneath London. That was the beginning of it, but we were down there for hours and hours. The sky darkened and it didn't return to normal. Once, around midnight, Riz went upstairs and opened the door, but she came right back down again. She said the cobbles were galloping about, it wasn't safe to walk outside. After that first bit, the memories collide and get confused. I have trouble keeping track of which came first, which came later, and whether I'm imagining something. I spent a lot of days like this, thinking back, trying to piece together the bits of the puzzle. As if I could realize something that would make sense of it all. Anything I can do here? No? Let's head outside. Okay, so we can go to St. Albans Roto Martyr or the boarding house. This name is just such an interesting name. We gotta go here. St. Alban what? That seems like a glitch. Excuse me? Okay, well the, that happens when I click on that. Let me try the controller. Um... Alright, I just had to click faster than it would back out of that. That's, like, obviously an error. Um, St. Alvin's Proto-Martyr. I couldn't read that little text in between of it, but you know. This is the closest church to Horatia's. I've been a frequent parishioner. I've come occasionally, but not often to be known. I've never darkened this door. Yeah, we come occasionally. Hello. Theophilus. I see the masters are meddling with the affairs of the church. Introduce myself flirtatiously, introduce myself and reveal that my family were scholars and churchmen. Introduce myself as an agent of the ministry. Let's start th with this. Stuart here. In happier times, my family were scholars and churchmen. Though I have noticed no one is as great a stickler about introductions as they used to be. 
indeed. Um, choose questions, draw this conversation. Ask for a theological explanation of recent events. How do you reconcile the fall with the teachings of the church? You know, don't you, where we are? This is hell, the glorious city. Perhaps we have all died and come to judgment together. But those people with the yellow eyes, they are devils, fallen creatures who have come to tempt us. Scoff at his provincial naivete, offer some insights, suggest temptation is not always bad. Yeah, I mean, it lets you test if you have self-control. Did one of them offer you something you wanted? Not all temptations are evil. You joke, but it was not amusing at the time, I assure you. One of them walked into my church yesterday as plain as a pike staff and asked me for my soul. Just in those words, too. Like Mephistopheles offering a bargain to Faust. I told her where to go. Oh yes, it was a female devil. They make them male and female, or in the semblance thereof. But she just smiled and she planned to be back another occasion. Did she leave a calling card? I beg your pardon? In case you change your mind about soul sales? I know where the devils congregate, but far, far be it from me ever to direct the unwary to their doorstep. Forgive me. If you are curious or worse, the merest contact with them could have the most severe and detrimental effect. Alright, we'll leave that alone for now. We are commanded to be wise as serpents. I'll keep my own counsel, thank you. Uh, what the hell? Something landed on the roof. It looks down at us through the gaping hole above. Its eyes are glittering. Bat. Um, far too large to be a bat. Larger than the eagle. A gargoyle? An imp? It landed there a few times before, especially when the choir is practicing. Is it drawn to the music? Perhaps it is musically inclined. Just as well, the opera has been suspended in that case. It might have carried off the society by now. There he goes. The Tetra Ground Synagogue is in better condition than our little church. I've wondered whether that signifies the direction of divine approval. So, okay, there's another synagogue. Um, yeah, I gotta ask you some questions. Um, employment. I've wondered whether this thing okay. Ask making it clear for the census, bring up the subject. He doesn't like our ministry, he said. I'm just gonna I'm gonna make it seem natural. Uh, until I found this position with the ministry, I had no employment. The fall cut me off from prior occupations. From time to time I've considered offering myself as a tutor to some interesting pupils. My Greek and Latin grow rusty. But I never put the plan into practice. Now as we see, the education of the young is no longer a primary concern in the best houses. Okay. Household organization. I'm going to make it clear that this is for the census. Ask me to record whether you live alone. I live alone and the room is provided for the vicar of this parish. There is a woman who comes twice a week to clean, or there was. Her visits have been more erratic as of late. Matters of the heart. Um, use my knowledge of him to bring up the topic. You seem like someone who would have a wife just as efficient as yourself helping to oversee the parish. I was married. The lady was two or three years older than myself, a very sensible and capable woman. Her name was Anne. Okay, he told me that. Let's ask. And Withwick is no Withernwick is no longer with you. Sad but not unusual tale. I'm safe to confide. 
You can trust me. She died giving birth to our first child. The baby did not survive her by more than a few days. I'd hope to be reunited with them in the hereafter, but we see what the hereafter has proven to be, at least in my case. It seems the Almighty has deemed me unworthy. Let's challenge it. We can't let this dude think he's in hell. I doubt the Almighty takes that view. Vengeance is his, they say. We find ourselves here in the dark. Yeah, lead the conversation. I should finish preparing my sermon. It was good of you to stop in. Lord, see you safely home again. There's time to run one more errand before summer. Okay, we've got two census sheets now. Better than the zero. Alright, so now there's the synagogue and the boarding house. Oh, okay, so this, this actually stays up now. Oh, this is where we live. Oh. Um, find Horatia and ask her census questions. Find Harjit outside. Let's find Horatia, because she seemed a little persnickety with, uh, what's his name? Horatia owns a rooming house. We were all living with her when London fell. I am indebted to Horatia. Since the fall, I haven't always had the funds to pay for room and board she provided for me anyway. If there's anything to eat, I'm always welcome to join the other lodgers. She's never said a word in front of the other guests. Okay? You know Grizz has to be filling out census information for the ministry. It's been hard to miss, Stuart. I've had an earful from her, grumbling about how you hadn't started yet. I should have worked faster. That's fair. I should have begun sooner. Uh, sometimes down here it doesn't feel as though time moves. Every day is like every other. If you can even call it a day when there's no sunrise. I feel it too, love. It isn't easy to stand where she does, Stuart. The masters weigh her by how useful she is to them. While she serves them well, all of us gain. But there will come a time when she has no more to give them. That's likely true. I came down here to ask some questions for the census, in fact. Ask away. I have a full basket of money to get through, and I'd rather talk than listen to the clock tick. Here's a question. Employment. Make it clear for the census. The census wants me to write down anything you're doing other than running the house. The house has been my business a long time now. My father left it to me. He bought it so I'd have a good place to live. He didn't want to leave it up to whether I'd find a husband, which I haven't. The butcher at the corner used to ask me, but I think he wanted more room for his children. Okay, that's all I can do. Thank you. While you are here, this morning I was in the basement checking our supplies. I found a couple of rats down there reading the labels. They were sounding out the words. Calmly accept the animals now speak English. I believe you. You can take my word for it. I don't like to think what the voided creatures might be planning. From now on, I don't want anyone but me going down to the basement. Are you really talking about rats? I missed some curiosity. What are you so nervous of in the basement? Is it really the talking rats? I'm not telling you a word unless you swear to me you won't go looking by yourself. I can't have you sneaking down in the basement alone, no matter what fancy ideas come into your head. Offer no clear commitment. We shall see. That is not a promise. I honestly said, but in that case, my secrets stay with me. Okay, there's some weird rats in the basement. I think that will do for now. Good luck with the ministry. So, like, what the heck? The rats are sounding out the labels in the basement. She sets dinner soon afterward. Grizz is waiting for me. Whatever census forms you have ready, it's time to take them to Mr. Pages. Yeah, let's do that first. We gotta, we gotta make some money. I'm prepared. I sincerely hope that's true. Come with me. Once I've shown you how to reach the ministry, you can come back on your own and turn in others. 
Grace has me gathering my papers. With luck, Mr. Pages will decide to keep you on. I mean, I've only got three. Uh, she leads me outside and along a side street that is no longer named. The way is serpentine. To, though the streets do not seem to lead towards the spires at the center of the city. But each time I look up, it is closer, the spired building on the horizon. Finally, we find ourselves standing in its shadow under the walls. Before us is a low door that once I think belonged to a solicitor's office. Grizz takes out a key made of something other than metal and unlocks the door. Mind the pile of papers, I've already sorted them three times. Mr. Pages is very particular about the ordering of documents. Makes sense with his name. Where is he gone? Usually he's here by this time of day. Oh, hello. There you are, sir. We were just coming to bring you the census documents. A first installment of many, I'm sure. Mr. Pages, may I present Stuart? Stuart, this is Mr. Pages. The whole Ministry of Accounting and Recounting is under Mr. Page's direction. Um, express gratitude for the job. Thank you very much for offering me employment. The opportunities in London aren't what they used to be. Grizz assures us that they are improv- They are improvocated. It is highly gratis gratificatory that the populace of London appreciates their move. Hey, thanks for the raid, Cory. <laughs> How was your stream? What's up? Welcome in. I'm testing out some of the Steam Fest demos today. So this is Mask of the Rose, which takes place in one of my favorite video game universes, Fallen London. Um, and we're we're at work right now. We work for the scary guy. Um. Hell, you did the Elden Ring co-op. How was that? Um, I'm not gonna tell my boss that he had something to do with London being stolen by bats. I'm gonna bow. With the very powerful, one must align oneself carefully. Is it good? Okay. Uh, are you playing it on PC or PlayStation? Like, oh, I guess you could only mod it on PC. Stupid question. Um... That's cool. I would like to try it if I had it on PC. It's a very powerful one must align oneself carefully. What have you brought us? Hand over the finished census, census page about Horatia. Most intergrigant. He gives me a shiny penny for my trouble. So like in the mod, if you die, do you end up both losing, or is it when both of you die? It's newly minted and has a portrait of someone on the back who is certainly not the queen. The face on the black of the coin stares at me until the hair prickles on my neck. Reminds me of a debt ode. I don't want to remember. And my breath hitches and slow resumes. That one is of, inter of interest. Family facient lack lacking auxority. In a boss battle, you have to spectate. If not, you respawn at grace. Oh, okay. That seems cool. I don't have a filing index for that combination. I will designate a sigil and suitable ink. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Fall in London or Sunless Sea or Sunless Sky, but this is from the Steam Next Fest demos, and it takes place in that universe. And it's some of my favorite games even though they frustrate me. So the plot of this universe is that at some point, um, London was stolen by bats. And like, it's sunk into the ground and everyone, you've ended up near hell. Um, and there's no way out. And you're living in this underground city um, now. And Fallen London is a browser-based game where you make a character and it's text-based and you, you have like a certain amount of movements a day and you try to complete quests and talk to people. And then Sunless Sea, it takes place in the same universe, but you're like a captain, and you're sailing the underwater ocean that London is now near, and it's like a roguelike, you have to try and survive as possible. And you encounter like sea monsters, and pirates, and all that stuff. 
and when you go on the ports, you like do text-based options to try and make money and stuff. And there's also Sunless Sky, which is the same but in the air. So this is a visual novel called The Mask of the Rose in that universe. So, I'm having fun with it so far. Ronnie uh, had plans tonight, which is why she's not here. I will designate a sigil and suitable ink. We're gonna try some other demos after this too. The colors on the last sigil burned my eyes. What else is there? Yeah, we're turning into arches. Takes my, my penny payment from a jar, brings my stash to two. There are other coins in there and a few things that aren't even coins. Buttons, pearls, probably false. A horse head carved from ivory or bone. We are grateful for your assistance. We did not expect much from Archie. Under, can gri under Con Grizz, having already revelated that he is a lightless character. Do you have anything more? I have one about Theophilius. It spends some time screening it. Whatever it finds, it considers impressive enough to offer two pennies. It is, I think, disappointed all the same. There is something it is looking for that it cannot find. Grizz specificated the existence of holy men who were wedded to the church. This one appears to have been wedded to a woman only. A disappointment, though we thank you. It might have been something more. It contemplates the final sheet of the census form again. Can I ask you a question, sir? Can I ask about the census? What is the census for? What are you doing with the census information? Yeah, boss, answer my damn questions. All of London's older records were destroyed in the fall. Not destroyed. Rendered less than utilificatious. Many of the people counted are deceased, moreover the older records are a missionary. Perhaps it was time for such a thing. My uncle always said parliamentary procedures have the dust of the Tudors on them, if not of King Alfred. Okay. That's enough for today. I don't want to bother my boss. He did just pay me four pennies. I'm rich now. Grizz? accompanies me out when it is time to go. As we make our way back to Horatius, she asks me what I think of Mr. Pages. She tries to make it sound like an idly curious question. Make light of Pages' tailoring challenges. Promise to keep up with the job. Thank you her for arranging this boat. Thank you for the job. I'm grateful for the arrangement. It was very good of you to put this together. You're a good egg, at least. That's what my former fiance used to say. Griselda, you're a good egg. Griselda, the, the rap group from Buffalo? Before we go back inside the house, she reminds me. We have many more people in the neighborhood to survey for the census. You know how it's done now, so you can collect them and take them to Mr. Pages yourself. I have other duties and I may not always be there, but Pages as well. I'm certain you won't be harmed if you visit the Ministry on your own. Say none of what I'm thinking. Horatio will be setting out the food now. Hi guys. Archie is already at the table when I arrive. When he sees me come in, he gives a guilty star and scoops some of his stew back into the taurine. Took more... In I the right to you, but I've not eaten, eaten any yet. Apologies. Shrug and take a bite. I'm too hungry to decline my dinner just because it took a sojourn in someone else's bowl. There was a lass who asked me to come round and look at her brother, a Jewish family. They usually go to their own doctor, but he's out of service or ran away or something of that ilk. Their old synagogue was destroyed in the fall, so they've moved to the Tenter Ground Synagogue. Okay, I found that place earlier. Rachel and David Landau. David has a stomach complaint. Chronic. Perhaps they're having trouble cooking anything palatable. It isn't easy these days with what we have. The sister's a beauty. 
She wouldn't leave the room while I saw that her brother. Um, what was Rachel doing? Is that unusual? What was she doing? <laughs> Kept watching me while I worked, making notes in her wee book. Felt as if I was being marked on my bedside manner. And the brother? Will he live? Oh, I. For a bit, I thought it might be serious. What he needs is his stomach settled. Um. Let's ask a question from our notebook. No questions available. Unnerving stories about meeting Grizz's employer. Bye. Grizz took me to the ministry. Her employer wears a cloak like a highwayman and keeps offices like a solicitor. Oh yes. Is the ministry very grand? I wouldn't say grand as much as unnerving. They must be well to do if they've food enough to feed all of London. I'm not sure Grizz is wise to work there. I may like the sound of them. It does sound unusual. I admit, some of Grizz's stories gave me a turn, but you mustn't be too quick to judge. These people at the ministry might have different ways from ours. Still no questions? Keep quiet and eat. I chew diligently. The first few days weren't bad. People had food in their pantries still. Old loaves of bread left over joints, roots, and jams. Nothing new was coming into the markets. No new fish, no vegetables from the farms. By now, supper is finished. Horatia stands and begins putting the dishes away. Next day? Season of Confessions. This sounds like a soap opera title. Despite everything, there are still broadsheets printed. Headlines today read, London swallowed whole by Leviathan, sermon on the wrath of an angry god. I didn't get any new outfits, right? Got the hat. Nope. Recall the past. I remember the days of the fall and fragments. There are a few moments that I'm always drawn back to. Memories that stand for everything else that happened. There are things I sometimes remember from that night that cannot have happened. Impossible things. If I concentrate, I can recall. Constable Harjeet checked on us. I think Grizz did say something about her family name. Something in the corner of the basement. Ah, we gotta go with something in the corner of the basement. Let's get weird. Also, we talked about the rats in the basement earlier, so this is this is on brand. I remember waking up in the night and seeing that there was a new rat hole in the basement wall. And as I lay there gazing at it, there came something like the limb of a cephalopod from that hole. It felt about the basement and wrapped itself around a lump of coal, finding nothing else handy. But that displeased it, it seems, because the lump again it dropped the lump again and withdrew. When I summoned the courage to look into the hole, I saw nothing, and I could not be sure that I saw it truly. Alright, we got, like, uh, squids in the walls? Time to go outside. The bazaar. Alright, I got, I got pennies to spend. The ministry offices are tucked snugly under that unexplained and very un-English tower. Oh, okay, so this is where the office is. Before I go there, let's check out the Tetraga. Look for Archie's patients, the Landau's. We've never met before, but I recognize these people, anyway, from Archie's description. They have to be the Landau's, the brother and sister pair. He's been treating David's stomach pains. Wait here, Rachel. I'll speak with this person. It won't take long. Good morning. Introduce myself as a friend of Archie's. Stuart here. 
I have the advantage, I'm afraid. I know of you through a friend of mine, the young Dr. Archibald Reed. He and I reside at the same lodging house. Er, I am David's sister, Rachel Simcha Landau. She has the first name and watches me significantly, so I am supposed to have heard of her. I am Rachel's brother, David. He says this, his voice takes on the faintest trace of an accent, though otherwise he speaks like a gen an Englishman. Did Dr. Reed send you with us some sort of message? I shouldn't call him doctor, as he didn't qualify. He would have known to find us here, but I can't imagine what message that would be. We paid the fees. No, no, I'm here on my own business. He told me you might be here. What can we do for you? Um, I'm working for the ministry. They've asked me to work on the census. I'll answer your question, Stuart, if you answer mine. Call it character research. Are you having peculiar dreams down here? Um. Mention that Arch... You know, I'm having peculiar dreams. What, what, we've been kidnapped by bats and taken to hell. I might as well, from time to time. Of a land of thick green jungle and an orange sun high above, of colors you don't see in waking life. Yes, sometimes. People miss sunlight and foliage, so they dream of that. It's like being hungry and dreaming of cream cakes. Do you see a bird with seven heads? No. Go ahead with your question, Stuart. Um, household organization. Flirtatiously ask. There's something I like to ask about the new people I meet. She seems like she has like some kind of power. She knows that she's her family name means something. So if I can get in with her, I can maybe make money. Who else lives in your household? Our home contains myself, my brother, and our housekeeper. It isn't a grand establishment. We had a Jewish housekeeper for many years, but she passed away, and Phoebe had lost her place with a neighbor of ours. There's a short silence. Rachel brings up a legend common among excuse me. The server class is that the Neath contains many other fallen cities. To say if you travel far enough through the cave, you find the ruins of Kit Kitas. If you walk three times the circumference of the cave, counterclockwise, you come to the palace of the Queen of Sheba. No one has discovered even one edge of the caves yet. She's not meant to be easy to find. Um, Fertacious. I do find you fascinating. Rachel glances at him and looks mildly embarrassed. Ask another question. Employment. For the census, what is your employment? We have money in the funds and in the interest in several businesses in London and elsewhere. The time was when I used to be very busy in answering letters from Livorno from Amsterdam. These days my time is not so extensively occupied. No one speaks for a moment. She turns the subject to a rumor she heard concerning the eye color of bats. Flirtatious. You intrigue me. She glances at him and looks mildly embarrassed. Matters of the heart. Do you have any romantic options, David? He doesn't have any commitments. In fact, I would go so far as to say he's utterly without prospects. Damn, lady! Just roast your brother right here. He stays at home and reads. I haven't been well. He warns me of spinsterhood, but he's headed very much in that direction himself. It isn't the same thing at all. I agree, it isn't. I have my work to support myself. My sister is a famous authoress. Okay. Serialized in the Lily of London, if you can believe it. But what's become of your funds since the fall? You have to marry if you don't mean to end your days of pauper, brother. I'll rely on you to support me in my failing years, sister. Matters of the heart? Married, betrothed, in love? Oh, not recently. I was in love once or so I imagined. Charlotte, she and David had an understanding. She converted in any case. 
Becoming Christian suited her social as social aspirations. Rachel. Yes, yes. I take leave to dislike your unworthy suitors as hardly as you dislike mine. Milton is yellow-eyed, flash-dressed, hot-handed creature at least two decades too old for my sister. She's dating a demon? I hardly think he and Charlotte are comparable. I would like to know more. Oh dear, the rules of polite society have broken somewhat in the fall, haven't they? Nothing of the sort. Milton is an artistic inspiration. If you're not a writer yourself, Stuart, you cannot guess how much the fall has disrupted our sort of work. Characters have certain tastes, certain preferences, certain prejudices. All I need to do is imagine them in new circumstances and their reactions write themselves. But now, we've all been at least a little bit cracked by the fall. How does anyone behave? Who can say? You always said you wrote from observation. You can still observe. Since the fall, there's no pattern in what I see. It is only home that makes sense to me, and I cannot make my whole novel about brothers and sisters lighting candles in Shabbat. Hold my tongue. The rest of the world must come into it somehow. Milton helps me sort the rest of the world. He can make sense of anything, even a viscountess running down the streets in her pen peignoir. That is the least confusing thing that's happened since we arrived here. Let me say, Stuart, Milton smokes rose-scented cigars. He helps me. Take her and Milton's side, and encourage, her, encourage him to further gossip. Let's take her side. That doesn't sound so bad. See? Milton quotes poetry instead of making conversation. That's me! <laughs> of course I know that man, he's me! It's one of the things I like about him. We're expected elsewhere. I'm not feeling well enough for this. Goodbye, Stuart. I have time for another errand before supper. Um, whose notes do I have? I have one. Alright, let's go to the bazaar. We're gonna go when Grizz isn't there. We gotta talk- we, let, let's see what Mr. Stewart or Mr. Pages says to me. Grizz has already shown me once how to visit the Ministry. It's not hard for me to return on my own. Mr. Pages is at his- it's desk when I come in. He raises his head and looks at me without saying anything. Do you have anything more? Here you go. Mr. Pages pays. Then puts the census page in a stack of others much like it. It weighs the stack down with a paperweight. If I look too hard at the paperweight, my eyes sting. It seems he cares for his sister more than any other. Did a good look around. The place looks like a repurposed law office. The shelves, the desk, the paperwork, it could be an ordinary solicitor office. But a few things look wrong when I attend to them. That paperweight on Mr. Page's desk makes my eyes sting to look at it. Gotta hydrate. We're reading a lot. We advise against looking too long. Those that aren't careful may be troubled with nightmares. Alright. Have a good day, Mr. Pages. It is times difficult to tell whether Pages has intentionally ill-mannered or merely has no interest in discovering what the proper etiquette might be. The hallways outside are hushed, except that if I listen closely, there is a sound like something walking with an uneven gait. Its shoes, or perhaps its toenails, click on a polished floor. At this point, I go back to Horatia's. good one of you is here for supper. Neither Archie nor Grizz has made an appearance today. Good evening. I'm looking for Mr. Reed. Is he here? Archie? He's upstairs. Harjeet turned up at the constable, as a constable of these streets right around the time London fell. I don't see him around here before that, but he's watched over the neighborhood since. Listen. Yes? I know all the old maps have been outlawed. But if you come for his atlas, do you think you could leave it with him? He gives him a lot of comfort, remembering all those little villages in Scotland where his family used to live. Um... 
I'll keep quiet. I'm not here about maps or atlases. Let them keep chatting. Oh, does it do with his doctoring? I hope no one's too ill. I know Archie Worry is trying to do physician's work when he didn't finish his training. Does he often treat people? Yeah, don't don't talk too much about Archie. Perhaps we should find out why Archie is here before we answer any more questions. You may find yourself assisting an inquiry sooner or later. This is the moment that Archie comes downstairs. Archie, I hope you're well. I'm sorry, Archibald. I'm here in the line of duty. It's about David Landau. Something happened to him? I only saw him today. Shortly after your visit, he died by poisoning. Died? The poor man. Don't react. Sorry to bring you this news. Is Rachel alright? Is there anyone to protect the house? The Landau said you were the last person to speak with David. That the fatal dose must have come from you. I don't understand. We're here to arrest you for murder. Wait a moment. Perhaps Mr. Landau's own relations took against Archie's manner and they're blaming him for what he didn't do. My manner? Your way of speaking is peculiar, love. Sometimes people leap to conclusions for the wrong reason. I knew it was time till summit went awry. There's too many folks ill, and can I cure the whole town? Where are you taking Archie? Newgate Prison was destroyed in the fall. For the time being, prisoners are held in the HMS Ungulate. Sounds like a very insalubrious environment. Cold, damp, infested with vermin. Breathing the vapors of the Thames. It might be good for the health of the prisoners. It might not be good. You're not taking, talking your way out of that. No. I mean, if you don't mind, before we set out, I'd like to collect a few doses of this and that. Things that might help settle bad lungs and prolonged coughs. You're asking whether before we go, you can be allowed to rearrange your collection of drugs and bring some of those drugs with you? That isn't quite how I'd have phrased it. You stand accused of murdering a man through the use of potent toxins. Oh. How dare they. For the sake of your future guards and cellmates, I think I must refuse. Is Rachel alright? How is Rachel doing? Does she have anyone with her? There's her housekeeper, Phoebe, and some of her friends from the community. They're preparing for the, bo the body for burial and cannot be left unburied very long. Where is he being buried? They mean to take him to the Jewish graveyard at Ball's Pond. Rachel said there might be a dispute with their Spanish relatives that their mother was buried somewhere else. But she did not think it would change the outcome. Alright, Archie. Sorry. I'll be back as soon as I can. Don't let out my room to anyone else. Next time on Mask of, Ro of the Rose. If you want to see the surface again, tell the truth. What's in the bottle? I don't know what it is. I only know what it does. You have no need to lie. I know I'm not seeing the surface again. Archie's books. Help me burn them before they give Harjeet the wrong idea. There's a true story in here and thousands of false ones. Compelling, but for next time. More heart crumblance is required. My, pe my own people won't permit disturbing a gravesite, but you, I know you'll help me for your friend's sake even if you don't care about David. My companion is good with the shovel. Rachel, I'm sorry I had no choice. We thought you were dead. I was. And we need to see my murderer. The next time he tries, I might not be able to come back. Alright. The plot thickens. Uh, I've already wishlisted it. Um, turn to the title screen. Alright, 
I really like that. Um, I mean, I really like all of Fail Better game stuff. I'm excited to play that when it fully comes out. Um, my only thing I wished for that was that I could have bought some clothes. You know, they give you options. You're obviously going to get more clothes, but I would like to actually have had the choice to buy some. And, like, I don't mind reading. I wish there was a little voice acting to make it a little easier on my throat. But definitely going to play that when the full game is released. And I'm looking forward to it. Fail better never disappoints. <laughs>